There are a lot of reasons why the Nintendo Switch is so successful, but one thing that probably influenced the Switch more than anything else is Nintendo's last home console, the Nintendo Wii U. Most Nintendo fans will probably admit that the Wii U is partially why the Switch is so successful now. Not only on just how the concept of the Switch is directly derived from the Wii U gamepad, but hell, even three years into the Switch's lifespan, Nintendo's first party lineup consists of a ton of ports from the Wii U. But to be honest, can you blame them? They have this huge catalog of HD games that no one really played that require very minimal to no adjustments to bring over to the Switch just kind of sitting there. So there's no wonder, not counting a couple of very glaring omissions, Nintendo has pretty much brought every eligible Wii U game over to the Switch. However, there have always been a couple of games on the Wii U that, that just need to stay on the Wii U. Solely because these games, well, their entire purpose was to promote what made the Wii U so unique. That's the gamepad. There are a few of these games out there, but on top of them all, at least in my opinion, is Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land is an absolute gem of a game, and it sucks that it's so, you know, stranded on the Wii U, because it really is an absolute blast. It's probably the most charming Nintendo game they've ever made. However, even though Nintendo Land will never leave the Wii U, I'm sorry, it just won't, today we're gonna talk about how Nintendo could possibly modify Nintendo Land, how they could take this game that's sole purpose was to sell people on the Wii U and say, hey, this Wii U, this, this new controller, this is so unique, it couldn't be done on any other console. We're gonna take that game and we're gonna put it on another console. Even though we're probably gonna make so many edits that they would just go ahead and make a sequel instead of porting it, Today we're going to be taking a look at Nintendo Land and adjusting it to make this game functional on Nintendo Switch. So if this ever did get ported, there are a couple of ways it could work. One is the cheap way that I see a lot of people suggest, and while it's cool in theory, Nintendo would never do this because it's just too impractical for the general consumer. This mode is having two Nintendo Switches. One of them is connected to the TV, one of them is out of the dock, and is being utilized as a gamepad. This would essentially allow for Nintendo Land to be ported with no real tweaks at all, because there would still be a another controller with a touchscreen just like the gamepad, it would just be a normal switch that's connected to the other switch. I've seen people actually suggest that Nintendo do this, that is way too confusing and, and just too much effort for a game that's supposed to be played by casual consumers. The closest they've ever gotten to something like that is in Super Mario Party with Toad's Rec Room, but even then, it's just you put the switches up together and they like automatically sync. It's not the same as, yeah, it's just not the same. On top of that, that's just a small mode and Nintendo's not gonna sell a $60 game that requires you to have two consoles. I just, I highly doubt it. So now that that mode's out of the way, let's get into the actual mini game games of Nintendo Land and try and kind of workshop them into a way that could make them work on the Nintendo Switch. There are three categories of minigames, solo, co-op, and versus. After looking at all 12 of these minigames, the solo ones are generally the easiest to transfer over. That's because very few of them actually use the touchscreen. For some reason, a lot of the solo games just use motion controls. Donkey Kong's Crash Course is a perfect example. It's pretty much a physics-based game where you just tilt the gamepad. There's occasionally something where you'll have to use the microphone, but you could just have to either shake the controller or remap that to a button. It's really not that difficult. The only way the gamepad is utilized in games such as Octopus Dance is by giving the player another perspective with the touchscreen. Then games such as Takamaru's Ninja Castle, where you turn the gamepad sideways and flick the shurikens off the gamepad onto the TV. This was always such a cool just use of the gamepad, but unfortunately it doesn't really work with our Switch only port, so we're gonna remap the aiming to the gyro controls on the Joy-Con and remap the flicking of the shuriken to just a trigger pull. Once again, strips all the charm out of this game, but I mean, we're just trying to get this over to the Switch on any way possible. The only other solo game that even presents a challenge is Yoshi's Fruit Cart, because there you draw Yoshi's path on the touchscreen and you have to collect all the fruits, but you can't see the fruits on the touchscreen, you can only see them on the TV screen. To translate this game over, you could just have the fruits up there, then make them disappear and make the player kind of remember where they are and draw the uh, line with either the analog stick or 
gyro controls. Once again, it's scuffed, but that's kind of the point of this. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of Nintendo Land, the multiplayer. For the first three of the multiplayer games, these are under the team up or co-op category. These games include the Zelda minigame, the Pikmin minigame, and the Metroid minigame. All three of these, but specifically the Metroid one, are like legitimately really cool experiences. If you haven't played Nintendo Land and you have a Wii U, I would definitely get this game and get a couple friends over. It's seriously a blast, and I just, I don't know, I really do enjoy this game. Anyway, while all these games do utilize the gamepad in a pretty interesting way, there's never something that's so crazy unique that it couldn't be just remapped to split screen. Once again, it would be super weird and definitely just feel very awkward, but theoretically, you could do all these in split screen. When you're playing as the gamepad user in these co-op games, you're generally using motion controls, but once again, that can just be remapped to the gyro. Not very difficult. Last but not least, we have the multiplayer versus games. These are by far, like, the hardest ones to try and, you know, move over. Essentially, they all rely on the gamepad person being able to see a screen that other people couldn't see. Unlike the games where you're working together, if you were to make a split screen in this mode, people would just easily screen cheat and that ruins the entire point because like you really can't see what the gamepad person is seeing for any of these to work. Now we seem to be kind of at an impasse here. I already said at the beginning we're not going to be connecting any other switches so we're kind of just stuck on the TV screen but as I just said you can't play these games on a TV screen. Well I've actually kind of come up with a solution here. Once again it's a little bit scuffed but it does technically work and fit within these weird rules that I've set up for myself. Within the past couple of years Nintendo has made a venture into the mobile phone business. Games such as Super Mario Run, Mario Kart Tour, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, and Fire Emblem Heroes have all done relatively well, and Nintendo Switch Online heavily advertises the mobile phone app as one of its key features. Even though this is probably very unlikely, what if Nintendo released a Nintendo Land, uh, you know, companion app that you could download on the App Store when this Nintendo Land port would come out? This Nintendo Land companion app could be downloaded for free and it would just sync up with your Switch, maybe via a, you know, Nintendo code or whatever. So on the Switch, if you go into one of these three modes, like Mario Chase, Luigi's Ghost Mansion, or Animal Crossing Sweet Day, it'll say, hey, if you have this app downloaded, type in the code to play. When you type in the code, it streams to your phone what the gamepad would be seeing. I know that sounds pretty complicated, but this has actually been done in other games before. One of my favorite new party games, A Attack of the Squirrels is a VR game where you play as a giant tree and you have to, you know, protect your acorns from little squirrels. It sounds completely random and, and yeah, I mean, it is pretty random. But the reason I like it so much is because it's multiplayer in VR, but you don't need multiple VR headsets. Anyone who's in the room can join by downloading the free app on their phone and playing as a squirrel. So one person's in the VR headset, you know, having a fun time, you know, throwing stuff at the squirrels, making sure they don't, like, steal. Essentially, it's like capture the flag, like steal the acorn, and then you can have up to eight people who are just on their phone on a free app, all laughing and just having a great time. It's a really fun experience, and they could do something like that with Nintendo Land. Does any of this make sense? No, I just kind of wanted to talk about Nintendo Land because it's a really fun game, and I think that's really something that's kind of underrated in Nintendo's history. You don't see a lot of people talking about it because, well, generally no one talks about the Wii U anymore, and when people are talking about the Wii U, it's in the setting of, oh, this Wii U game should come to Switch but I feel like people have generally admitted that Nintendo Land can't come to Switch. I just wanted to kind of theorycraft how it potentially could. Once again, not going to happen. Just This was just a fun way for me to talk about Nintendo Land. If you guys made it this far in the video, pressing the like button helps a lot. This video is probably not going to do super well in terms of views because it's not the Mario remasters, but whatever. I mean, it was fun to make because I got to replay Nintendo Land, which is an absolute blast. Make sure to check out our podcast, Nintendo Tonight. It'll be linked in the description. Subscribe if you guys are new. With that out of the way, I'm Thomas from the Switch Stops, signing off. Peace.